From the Curtis R. Priam Experimental Media and Performing Arts Center, MPAC, at the campus of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, I'm your host, Dr. John Wexler, Vice President of Enrollment Management at Rensselaer, and this is Crashing the Faculty Lounge. Our guest today is Marty Daniels, the Director of Financial Aid at Rensselaer. Under his leadership, RPI awards nearly $280 million in financial aid a year to the student body. Marty, welcome. We're both crashing the faculty lounge today, and thanks for taking the time to speak. Sure, John. Thank you very much. It's great to be here today. So the number one thing for anyone who's a parent, student, or working in the world of higher ed or just reads the paper is the FAFSA application delays, which is a huge burden on students. And basically, colleges won't start receiving the financial aid data called the Free Application for Student Aid, otherwise known as FAFSA, until the end of the first half of March, more than a month later than expected, which was already delayed. The delay was announced by the Department of Education last week and is likely to frustrate many students waiting to hear how much they will receive from colleges before making a decision to enroll, normally the de- deadline of May 1st. Marty, can you give uh, the listeners some background of what's, what is going on? The changes that we're seeing now, the, the department is having struggles with, actually began several years ago. There's been an initiative called FAFSA Simplification, which was intended to reduce the number of questions that families had to answer and streamline the process for both families and schools. As that process has moved forward to implementation, the calendar to get things done is simply moved off of sync with what's expected at the campus level and what's expected by the families. A good example is that now that we know that the online system is up and running effectively, Students who have already completed the FAFSA might get an updated record because the initial release didn't include the proper updates to tax tables and other allowances that are behind the scenes. So even though things are getting better for the families, the schools are still in position of having to wait as you described. This is truly a unique year for everyone and it's increasing the challenges across the board. So you touched on something I think is very important in getting the word out. The FAFSA, students used to be able to apply on the FAFSA in October or even prior for the upcoming year using what used to, what was defined as prior, prior, but prior information financially from the parents. This year, the system didn't go live until December 30th and really had a lot of hiccups. But right now, those have been solved. And so students out there and their parents shouldn't have any problem uh, filling out the new FAFSA. That is correct. And when students go to the studentaid.gov website, be aware that when you start your session, they will have a notice if they're experiencing any system outages or delays. For the most part, the primary issues have been resolved. The student and family experience is what is expected. And now it's simply a matter of building the back end so that schools can begin to receive the data make the updates I mentioned a minute ago related to the tables, and hopefully begin processing around the end of March for the federal record. So just to point out two things there that Marty said. One, the website for those students who are applying for financial aid and filling out the FAFSA, that is found on studentaid.gov. The second part there is even though we mentioned early on that the FAFSA information will be coming later than expected to the, the universities and institutions such as Rensselaer, and this is a national problem. This is not just a Rensselaer. We strongly encourage, if you have not, to get on and fill out the FAFSA now. That way it's in line to get done and be on the first batches, if you will, that are going out. Don't wait till you hear that the schools are getting it, then to fill it out. That will just delay the packages to getting to students. That's correct. There's no reason to delay your FAFSA filing. It's all on the back end with the schools now. So please file your FAFSA as soon as you can. Great. Marty, Rensselaer is one of approximately 300 schools that is what's called a CSS profile school. And this is a huge advantage this year for students filling out the financial aid because the CSS profile is up and running and has nothing in connection to the FAFSA. So students are able to be able to submit that information and that for the students who did early action and early decision, we're able to get out their packages 
prior to having to wait for the FAFSA. Can you explain what the CSS profile is and how does that play in? Sure, absolutely. A uh, first thing to recognize is that the CSS profile has been RPI's application for Rensselaer funding for many, many years. This is not a new requirement for Rensselaer families, and as you mentioned, the 2425 profile has been available since October 2023. So if you have not yet filed the profile, please go to cssprofile.collegeboard.org and begin to file your profile now. When we get that information, it will allow us to package your Rensselaer gift aid as we have in all recent prior years, and then we'll have enough information to be able to estimate your federal aid eligibility as well. Certainly, we'll need you to file the FAFSA and follow up if you want to take advantage of those federal programs, but we'll have time to do that after we get your initial award out. So we really wanna focus on filing the profile now if you have not already, also do your FAFSA, and we'll help manage the timing and get your award out as complete as possible as soon as we can. And once again, that website is cssprofile.collegeboard.org. So for Marty, for the students who have submitted the FAFSA information already, and obviously, as we mentioned, the Rensselaer has not received that information, what can they expect when they do get a package, and what are the big changes that have taken place? First, on behalf of financial aid offices across the country, we appreciate your patience during this uh, interesting time for everybody. We also want to acknowledge that financial aid community and colleges are also aware of the May 1st deposit date. And so we're trying to get things resolved so we can move forward and keep things on the common calendar to the extent that we can. When it comes to the students who have submitted the FAFSA, first, please be aware that even though you might have done that and had no issues, the soonest that we are really expecting to have all of the data we need to work with is going to be around April the 1st. So for RPI specifically, file the CSS profile, we'll provide a complete award including estimates of your federal aid eligibility, and then we can work with you once uh, we have the FAFSA data if any corrections are needed. Um, understand that uh, the profile information about the FAFSA will simply be an estimate. However, we're managing our system and our processes to have great confidence that we can let you know your federal loan eligibility and the total dollars wouldn't change. We should be able to let you know if you're eligible for federal work study without expectation of change. So we're trying to do this in a way that minimizes extra work and minimizes uh, changes to the families. Uh, but again, you have to kind of hang in there with us. Uh, we'll send updates to students that really need the FAFSA, uh, but we'll get to a point where if a family, say for example, has their merit award and they do not desire a student loan, then they might not need to file the FAFSA. Otherwise, we'll encourage the students with estimated federal aid, please follow up with the FAFSA so we can pay you those funds. So for students, Marty, and we have a number of them who applied regular admission and we're, our admissions team is reviewing their files now, and did those decisions will go out probably near the end of the first week of March. If I haven't, if I'm a student, I haven't been admitted yet, should I still fill out the FAFSA and the CSS profile? Yes, most certainly you should. I like to say that we have priority filing dates rather than specific deadlines. So a student is able to file the FAFSA or file the profile at any time, and when we have their complete record, we'll review and provide them an award based on our standard policies for all students. So if you're in the standard admit group and haven't filed either form, please do them both now. Uh, we'd like to notify you of your award at the time that you're accepted. That's great. Marty, is there anything I haven't covered that you think is important uh, for families and students to know as they go through this process this year? I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that this is really an exceptional year. If you're looking at multiple schools, you'll need to follow multiple calendars, but hang in there with them. Everybody's trying to get the information to you so you can make the best decision for yourself and your family. As we move into future years, uh, you'll hopefully get back onto a regular schedule, and we only require the profile for the students' incoming year. So for future years, hopefully we'll be through this implementation, the FAFSA process will go much smoother, and we'll be back to normal processing starting with the 25-26 award year. I think one area that, Marty, that comes up that I get questions about is students, freshmen and beyond, the ability to work on campus. And some students may have work study 
in their financial aid pa- in their package, and other students who don't have that can still have the opportunity to work. Can you talk about that? Yes, I can. And actually, that's a great topic to bring up when we're talking about the potential of having a FAFSA come in and to review awards after we've already sent the initial package. Uh, For example, the federal work-study program is need-based using the FAFSA as the eligibility application. If we estimate a student is eligible for work-study and the actual uh, FAFSA says they're not eligible, that student can still work on campus in a student employment job. On campus, only about one-third of our student employment opportunities are through the financial aid process. So there's lots of great opportunities. The opportunities not through my office might be more associated with working with professors, working in undergraduate research, and things that are not maybe kind of administrative support for the campus offices. So there's lots of work to be done and lots of great students doing that work here at Rensselaer. And some of those positions, as Marty's talked about, you could have you could be working um, and helping set up for basketball games or athletic events, giving tours for the admissions office, helping pick up the phones in certain offices. And also, obviously, in some departments, you could be helping professors with their research as you go further on in your studies here. That, that's correct. Uh, when I was in college, I was assigned to the dish room, and we don't do that at Rensselaer. No. You're assigned to a nice professional job location with uh, working with a nice staff person. Um, In most situations, students can be placed with our union to work on student activities, athletics, to work on intramural sports, lots of fun jobs with the work-study program here at Rensselaer. So, and it's a great way, obviously, to earn some money, but also get involved, get engaged with the campus community um, and get out there. So, for our accepted students out there and students still in the admissions pipeline, we wanted to provide some key dates and websites. So as we discussed today, the first one we're going to go is a CSS profile, which is cssprofile.collegeboard.org. The FAFSA website is studentaid.gov. The Rensselaer RPI admissions website, which you can find out and register to visit campus or other activities that we have going on, is admissions.rpi.edu. And on that site, Marty and his financial aid team are going to have a number of financial aid webinars that are coming up. Um, We'll have one on March 5th at 7 p.m., March 6th at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m., April 1st at 7 p.m., April 9th at 3 p.m., April 17th at 7 p.m., and April 25th at 3 p.m. We may add dates due to demand. But you can find all those on the admissionsrpi.edu site. Two other things to keep in mind. One, we're open six days a week for visits. So Monday through Friday, we have numerous tours that students and their families can sign up for. And also on Saturdays, we have two times available for students to visit. And then for those of you who have been admitted, first of all, congratulations. And then we have two big upcoming admitted student celebrations on campus, both on Saturdays. Our first one will be on Saturday, March 23rd, and then our other one will be on April 13th. You're able to register online for any of those, and both of those days begin at 10 a.m., and we probably go to 3, 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you find this conversation helpful, and remember to visit admissions.rpi.edu for important information and updates. Until the next time, I'm John Wexler, and this is Crashing the Faculty Lounge.